Okay, uh, resource management, resource analysis. This is uh, step three. And in step three, we have to determine, do we have too much resource or too little resource? In step one, we find out what, uh, what we need for the project. And in step two, we find out what's available. In step three, we just subtract the two and find out either we've got too many resources or too few resources. As I suggested in the introduction, it's very likely you don't have enough resources to do your project. So very often this is a shortfall. But equally, you may find that some of your resources are in surplus. What are you going to do to keep them busy on your project? Are you going to hand them back to management to work on other projects, which could be risky because you might not get them back when you need them? Or how are you going to keep them busy? So this is just simply taking the availability and the requirements, subtracting the two and finding the difference. Step four of resource management, resource analysis, is dealing with the problems. And I'm suggesting that the problem is you do not have enough resources. Basically, there's only four things that we can do. We can change the objectives for the project, change the specification. And the next slide will show us some uh, solutions for that. Or we can change the method, the different ways we're working. Or we can change the resources that we have. Or we can change the plan. And we're going to have a look at each of these in turn. The first suggestion is to change the objectives of the project. I actually think this should be the last thing we do. So, not usually allowed. Just because we've got a problem with resources doesn't change the time objective, the cost objective, the quality objective, the triple triangle of project management. We might ultimately decide that we have to reduce the functionality or add more budget to buy more resources to get the project done. But this shouldn't be our first solution. The sorts of things that we could do here is to start the project earlier, which would give us more time, or make partial deliveries, change the delivery schedule, increase the budget so that we can get more resources, reduce the specification, reduce the quality, reduce the functions that we're delivering such that we can deliver it with the resources that are available. Don't do the project would be the ultimate solution if we really did have resource problems. The second way we can deal with resource problems is to change our method. Now this is making sure that we're working in the best way for those resources that we've got a problem with. Now the problem with this method is we should already have optimised our resources to do things in the shortest time possible because that produces the cheapest cost to do the project. So we're looking at ways of doing things differently in the work breakdown structure to achieve the same objectives. We're working smarter, not harder. But we should already have done this when we optimised the cost account. And the sorts of things that we could do is to automate the process, uh, buy some specialist tools, um, having a look at subcontracting some of the stuff to specialist staff, hiring equipment, consulting experts to see if there is a better way of doing this. Doing the work in-house rather than on-site, it might mean that we can do it with fewer resources or uh, it's cheaper. But, as I suggested, we should already have optimised the plan in this way to produce the cheapest pro possible project. So this shouldn't be available to us as an option when we have a resource problem. Our third method of dealing with resource problems is to change the resources. Now this is often the first thing that companies will do when they identify they have a shortfall of resources. Uh, they will cancel other projects to throw resources at the problem. Generalising a little bit, Americans can tend to throw resources at a problem. Um, they tend to work in a different employment culture, a hire and fire, a temporary contract type of culture, where you can hire people and if they're no good and we don't need them anymore, we fire them again, we release them. We could use subcontract staff. We could ask our staff to work extra hours, work on Saturday, or oh, can you work on Sunday as well now, please? 
can you cancel your holidays because we've got to get this project finished? Now, this solution to resource problems could be very expensive. Paying money to contractors is money going outside your organisation and contractors often charge a premium rate because of the insecurity of their employment. Getting people to work overtime, you're paying them maybe time and a half, double time. But really the, the biggest cost here is the stress to the people. You're getting people to work eight hour, nine hour, ten hour days. You're asking them to work on Saturday and on Sunday. And you find after a while that they're making mistakes or they're then phoning in sick, uh, pretending to be sick, rather than coming to work for the tenth day running. They're saying, oh no, I'm too ill, can't come into work today. Or they're coming into work and they're too tired, they're making errors, they're not doing things correctly, they're not thinking clearly. So you can stress your staff by throwing resources at it. It is uh, an option to increase the resources by getting the resources from other projects. But just think how people feel when they've been working hard on a project and somebody comes along and says, oh, we're cancelling your project, we need you to work on this other project. Think how demotivating that is, you know, oh, so this project I've been working on isn't important and you've just cancelled it. The people working on the first project are thinking, oh, aren't we good enough? Why, why we don't want these people helping us? We were a nice project team and now you've increased the number of staff working on the project. So it's, it can cause stress and demotivation. Yes, you can get contract staff in, expensive. You can ask people to cancel their holidays, but eventually you will lose their goodwill. You could train people to do specialist work. Uh, again, it costs money and it takes time. Okay, the fourth way, dealing with resource problems on projects is to change the plan. Now we can only do this if we have a detailed plan. And by detailed plan, we mean we've got a clear project specification. We know exactly what we want to achieve and we can identify the effect of a resource problem on those objectives. We've got a work breakdown structure. We can quickly analyze what we're doing and who's doing what and a resource problem can be shown on a work breakdown structure to identify where the problem is. We've got a responsibility matrix. We know who's doing what. We can see who is overloaded and who isn't doing as much work as perhaps they're capable of. We've got the cost account. We can see which tasks are costing the money. We can see which resources are costing the money. We've got the dependency chart and the network analysis. We can analyse this to see whether we can add lead or lag or change the dependencies to get around our resource issues. And of course, we've got the detailed resource uh, profile that tells us when our resource problem is. Now, changing the plan is for free. Doesn't cause stress, doesn't cost you money, but it does assume we have a good project management plan. So what can we do? Let's look at the work breakdown structure, check all the tasks are really required. Let's look at the dependency chart. What can we do concurrently? Uh, what can we change in the dependencies because of our resource issues? Can we increase the lead time, the overlap? Could we reduce lag time? This will change the resource profile for our project. Check the durations of the tasks. Are they optimised? When people gave you an estimate for the duration, it was just an estimate. They thought it was three weeks. Is it still three weeks? Maybe they can achieve it in ten working days now, two weeks. And of course we can use the float to solve resource problems. A task with float is non-critical, so we can actually move it so that it starts towards its latest start time rather than its earliest start time. These options are only available if we have a detailed project plan, a specification, a work breakdown structure, a responsibility matrix, a dependency chart, 
and network analysis. Then we can use some of these options to cure our resource problems. In the next video clip, we'll have a look at an example that shows this in practice.